So I start my Masters of Architecture in two weeks and I'm seriously underprepared. So in today's video, I'm going to prepare for my Masters and I'm going to show you guys how to prepare for university. Good morning ladies and gents, welcome back to a brand new video. Before we dive into the video, can I please ask you to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe, that would be much, much appreciated. So yes, today in this video, I'm basically going to be diving into me preparing for my Masters of Architecture and moving back to university. So in two weeks, I'm going to be heading off to London to study at the University of Westminster to start my Masters of Architecture, which is a two-year course. So I not only have to prepare for the course and for obviously getting back into architecture, but I also have to prepare for moving into a new flat, moving into a new place and gathering all my stuff, all my appliances, all my cutlery, all my, my duvet, everything and I've got to sort that all out in this video just sit back relax and enjoy <sighs> oh yeah so currently my desk space at the moment is just peppered with just a load of stuff just got stuff everywhere at the moment if you haven't seen the last video this is the new laptop Make sure you check out the previous video. But yeah, so I've got to sort out all of this. I'm taking this desk to university as well. So I've got to figure out how to take these legs off to fit in the car. But yeah, so I'm taking all of this, taking the desk, taking my monitor, taking pretty much all of this. And I've already made a head start with putting together stuff like my grill, um, chopping boards, pro markers, notebooks, notepads, whiteboard, rice cooker, Tupperware, stuff for uni, sketchbook, cutting mat, coffee machine, everything. I've got a full list here of everything I need. So in here I've managed to cram in all the essentials that I've been needing while studying architecture. So all of my equipment. And I'll just quickly run through this. Sketchbook, pencil case with all of my pencils, pens. Everything, scalpel, the whole lot. We've got a roll of tracing paper, allergy relief, <laughs> always comes handy. Big rubber, curve, metal ruler, masking tape, pins. We've got loads of Yoohoo glue, which is also really, really important. Highlighters, willow charcoal, colored pencils, because sometimes it's quite nice to do a drawing with some colored pencils. Notebooks, lots of them, hard drives, these are really important for storing work. More pins, and these are pretty much just the bits and bobs that I'll be taking and that I might be using for studying architecture. And then of course I've got a cutting mat, I've got a bigger sketchbook, I've got loads and loads of pens and different types of pens, which is really important as well. So we've started my masters. Luckily I've already obviously gone through the undergraduate. I've already got a degree. I spent time at university. So most of the stuff that I had at university before, I could take with me to my masters so I don't actually have to buy too many things, which is a good thing because it can get quite expensive. But tomorrow I'm actually going to be heading off to Ikea to grab a couple more things. <laughs> oh, <doing>? hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good flip. Good. Cool. Only came for a spatula. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, successful trip out to IKEA. We've got everything we need. Went a little bit overboard. <laughs> Literally only went out for a spat spatula. <laughs> Literally only went out for a spatula and ended up coming back with all of that stuff. Um, but we're all prepared now. We're all sorted in terms of the house, the flat, the kitchen all of the appliances, everything that I need. So now I'm gonna talk about how I got myself set up and prepared for my Masters of Architecture. And I'm not fully prepared yet, but this is the kind of steps that I've taken so far. So I think to start with, I think the first thing is just to get organized. I bought myself a new laptop. I wanted a complete fresh start for Masters. I wanted a clean slate. And so I invested in a new laptop that is gonna run a little bit better for my Masters. And it also gave me the chance to organize my hard drive. Uh, which was definitely needed because obviously studying architecture you get files everywhere But this year I'm going to be super organized with all my files and everything Because I don't want to end up losing any work or anything like that So I've got myself organized with a new laptop We're sorting out my hard drive and just clearing my laptop pretty much putting it into correct folders and all those kinds of things Just to make things a little bit more accessible and the first thing that I did in preparing for the course I actually went over to the university website and printed off the program specification 
And once I'd printed off the program specification, I spent a good few hours just reading through and highlighting all the key bits. And this kind of just got myself refreshed in terms of what are the aims of the course, what is required, what are the specifications, the course setup, the module setup. And this just really helped me to understand what level I need to be at and how much I need to step up for masters. But it also just got me a bit motivated, reading the specifications, reading what is required, just got me generally motivated and quite excited for the course. So this I'd highly recommend if you're struggling to get prepared, Download the program specification, go through, read it thoroughly, highlight all the key bits, write down all the keywords, and this will get you set up quite nicely. The next thing I did is just getting a head start with reading. This is one thing that I failed to do for my undergraduate. I hated reading so much, I avoided reading at all costs. However, this time I wasn't gonna make that mistake. And going into a master's degree, you can kind of get yourself prepared in that sense because you're a bit more aware of what is required and what is expected. Whereas going into my undergraduate, I didn't know what to prepare and I didn't know what to expect of the course. And so I didn't really do any research or anything prior. But master's is an opportunity to get yourself organized and prepared. And so I picked up a couple of books. So I picked up The Eyes of the Skin, Architecture and the Senses. I read this the other day, this is a fantastic book. I highly recommend this. And this just got me thinking a little bit more theoretically about architecture and thinking a little bit deeper into the decision making, which is really important going into a master's. And I also picked up this book, Architecture, Space, Form and Order. And the RIBA were aware that I was starting my master's in the next few weeks. And so they have very, very kindly sent over this environmental design source book. And we're gonna give it a little read. Yes, yeah, so this environmental design source book by Will McLean and Pete Silver looked very, very interesting and I'm quite intrigued. The source book presents key concepts in relation to the embodied energy of construction, material properties and environmental performance of buildings in an accessible way. So the contents of the book contain five chapters of climate and human comfort, materials technology, construction technology, heating, cooling and remediation, building case studies. And I'm just gonna pick out three bits that stood out to me which I thought were quite interesting. Chapter 1.04, acoustics, sound, noise, music, and architecture. And this section discusses pretty much how we've ignored the sounds of our architecture and how a lot of architecture, contemporary architecture, has been directed towards pleasing the vision, the eye. And over a period of time through our architecture, we have ignored the other senses of our body and it's kind of become quite detrimental to the human experience within spaces. And this dives into how sound is so fundamentally important to our existence and we tend to ignore it. The sounds our ears pick up are just as complex as light, but our minds subconsciously process the data so we are really not aware of what our ears are telling us most of the time. And it questions the role of the architect in this. Moving forward into chapter two, materials technology. I thought this was pretty cool. Thermo by metal, bloom and oculus. I think I said that right. <laughs> and this is a biometal that moves and changes shape due to heat. When the biometal is heated, it will start to bend because of the differential expansions of the metals. And some of her initial research was into self-shading, self-ventilating, self-assembling. And she explains in a window shading system that incorporates small biometal pedals within a double glazed glass module. And as the temperature from the sun increases, the biometal elements deform and block the sunlight and shade the building's interior. And so the idea is that it reduces artificial cooling. So obviously when it's hot, the metal will adjust and change shape and deform, which will block the light, which is gonna prevent the heat coming into the space. And therefore it's reducing artificial heating by 28 to 42%, which is pretty cool. And finally in chapter five, there's a feature of buildings that aims to illustrate a range of projects that through material composition, site specification, or technological ambition presents different models of ambitious environmental design. And it explains quite a few projects through diagrams and through imagery. And the environmental design source book attempts to highlight a range of design approaches, issues and technologies with which develop sustainable designs in our age of climate change. And I would highly recommend it. It's a great book. I'm personally gonna be using this whilst at university, whilst studying my masters, because I think it is a great source book. And if you want to pick up one for yourself, you can head over to the RIBA website and use the code EDSROUNDTREE7 to get yourself seven pounds off. So thank you, RIBA for sending this out. And so even though I haven't really prepared myself too much, the main things that I've done is just organizing myself 
get myself organized with my hard drive, my laptop and everything, all my notepads and organizing all of that information and also just setting myself up by getting some books, beginning to read and starting to think like an architect again. And then just general things for university, I've got myself a rail card, I've got myself a Tesco club card, I've started budgeting so I understand what my outgoings and ingoings every month and I've also found my local gym so I've got myself kind of all set up for moving. And just to finish the video, I wanted to share a couple of pieces of advice from the community. Jade says to buy a gamer's laptop. Probably quite a good suggestion. Alex says, pick projects you are generally passionate about. I think that is really important and I'm definitely gonna do that going into masters. Pick projects that you're passionate about. It gives you extra motivation. It gives you that extra kind of push to go further with the project. Organize your life so you can start strong and be prepared to read a whole lot of architecture theory. And yeah, absolutely, get yourself organized, get yourself prepared. And finally, Tom says, elevate your thinking, find deeper concepts and push methodical boundaries. And yeah, that is gonna be wrapped on today's video. That was me preparing for my masters. I'm not fully prepared yet, but I made a start, which is important, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.